education, criminal justice, and human services. Um, we're here to today to talk to you about um, programs in that college, the experience students have in that college, and how it could be a great fit for an international student. So good morning, if it's morning right now in your country, or good evening. Um, so today I've got Corbin and Victor with me. I'll let them both introduce themselves. So Victor, can we start with you? Okay, my name is Victor. I do work for, I'm a graduate student at the University of Cincinnati, and this is my first year in a master's program. And what are you studying? I'm studying information technology. Okay, thank you. Hi, I'm Corbin Purdom. I'm the undergraduate enrollment advisor in the college, so just assisting students as they're potentially looking into the programs here in this specific college. So Corbin does a lot. At the college, it's, I mean, you have a pretty large college, right? A lot of programs. Yeah, we have 11 different bachelor degree programs, four different schools with their programs as well. We serve about 3,000 undergraduate students and a little over 3,000 graduate students in the college. Wow, okay. And for international students, what programs do they typically apply to here on campus and on your online programs? Yeah, so our information technology program is probably our highest um, as far as how many international students enroll in our program. So international, our information technology, um, we have our health promotion and education program, substance abuse counseling, which is an online program. Um, our sport administration program has had some interest there. And then our uh, other online program that's been popular with international students <coughs> is our early childhood online program. Okay. Now you're in IT, yes, is that right? Yes, I am. I'm enjoying it. So it's, uh, uh, one thing I like about the program is the dynamic nature of the program. Our volunteers wanted to be in the field as less restrictive and that cuts across every aspect of human life. Yeah. And so did you study IT at the undergraduate level? Well, my undergraduate level, it's like a blend. I, I first did at information management, then I did computer science as a second uh, degree, and here I am at IT program. Mm -hmm. Okay. And then as far as your, your program, are you um, working with undergraduate students at all or seeing them within your classes or the halls? Well, for my program, there's an accelerator program whereby you do your BSA with your master's degree, which is like in five, five years, mm -hmm. program BS, MSIT program, and also I'm working as a teaching assistant, so I kind of have direct contact with undergraduate students, because I do a lot of grading and uh, assistance. Mm -hmm. so, okay. So as far as the IT program, if we could talk more about that, um, I think it's great that you're a TA for undergraduate students. But this, that particular program is unique because it's five years. Um, and I think most of the programs in the College of Education and Criminal Justice and Human Services are four years. What makes that program a five year? Yeah, so um, it's five years because they incorporate a required co op experience. Uh, so you yeah. have five yeah. semesters of paid co op where students are working in a paid full time position. Mm -hmm. um, so they do, they do five semesters of that experience. And so that's what makes it a, that extends the program to be a total of a five year. Program. So typically the first year they're on campus taking those first year courses, their second year they begin on campus, and then they begin rotating between a full semester of work at a company anywhere in the United States or internationally. Correct. Yeah. And we they have... get paid and they don't pay tuition, right? Correct. They, okay. they don't pay tuition uh, when they're working. Uh, there is a co-op fee uh, in the mm -hmm. semester that they How are How much working. is the co-op fee? It's about $400. And that's just to hold your spot on campus? That's to keep you in the in, yeah, in UC. In the computer system, keep your your status active. Mm -hmm. So when you finish that first co-op your second year, you've earned, how much students earn typically after working three months for a semester? So for a semester, they're making anywhere between ten to $15,000 in a semester. Average, they, the average hourly pay is about $15 an hour. Uh, so, for students. and that money is the student's money? That's correct. It's not the university's money for the parents? No, they get paid a paycheck. Okay. So do they come back to school in the summer? Then? So they can. It depends on when you start because your first year, when you first start the program, the first two semesters, so your fall spring semester, mm -hmm. is all about building that foundational knowledge mm -hmm. in IT and taking like uh, introduction to IT, web development, computer development type courses, learning foundational skills. And then you start your first <coughs> co-op either that summer, fall, or spring semester after your first year. Mm -hmm. So if you take that summer off, you can co-op in the fall, or you can take classes right. in the fall and start a co-op in the spring. But whenever you start your first co-op, it would basically rotate from there up until senior year, where you're in I class. See. And if you take co-op in the summer, you're in class in the fall, then you co-op in the spring, and you take classes in the summer. So you're utilizing the 
the spring, summer, and fall semester. Right. So you're going to be working or in class mm -hmm. all year long yep. for the next four years after your first year. Correct. So okay. you usually seem to take that first summer off or the summer before their senior year off. That's fantastic. So for those co-op students, of course, can do them here in Cincinnati, Ohio, Absolutely. or in the United States mm -hmm. or abroad, right, to gain that professional experience. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we have students, a lot of students co-op in Cincinnati. We also have several students that will go <clears throat> and co-op internationally mm -hmm. uh, many of them who many international students will find positions back in their hometown mm -hmm. uh, which is very beneficial as mm -hmm. well they enjoy that and so uh, wherever we have they have a co-op advisor uh, that they that assists them with identifying <coughs> potential opportunities where they would, where they would work so does the co-op advisor work with the team to, to find the job opportunities for the students and where the students have to find their own co-op on their on their on their own through Google or another search online. Yeah, so we actually have our own partnership um, of organizations that students can work for. Okay. So they actually apply through our own kind of system. Mm -hmm. um, and so we have over 200 different partnerships uh, and kind of main uh, for students to potentially apply for. So they can apply to several positions. They actually go through, before they do this, they go through a class on professional development that prepares them for building a resume, interviewing, and uh, all those sorts of things whenever they're applying for a job. That's fantastic. So a lot of career experience. Yeah. Did you have something to add? Yeah, about the internship because I went through the professional development program uh, last semester and it was very awesome. The uh, faculty it was very supportive in building. I asked them to reshuffle my CV and give it from the scratch and it was very supportive. And also I noticed that we have a file website that is managed by UC where uh, it kind of, it's like a resource, it's a resourceful tool managed by UC. It's like a website where by student can log in there. Mm -hmm. You can have easy access to employers. You can submit your application to any employer on the list, which is a <coughs> partnership with UC, and it's very super easy to apply. Mm -hmm. Is it Handshake? No. What's PAR. the website? PAR. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. Okay. So as far as like the professors and working within the college, can you talk further about the education students will have? In the college, because you're, you're a TA. Yeah, yeah. So you're actually teaching as well, a little bit, right? Yeah, just a little bit. Kind of so what are the professors like in the College of Education, Criminal Justice, and Human Services? Um, from my experience, if I noticed uh, the professor on the standard, we're from various backgrounds, so they lead, uh, they're very understanding, and they can support you in whatever aspect you want to work with. As a as a uh, graduate student, you expected to man up on your research and have a focus on what you want to do, but definitely they are always there to guide you through all the process. Mm -hmm. And uh, in fact, last semester, one of our papers were, was accepted for a conference, and I was able to relate through the support of my uh, faculty advisor. I was able to present a paper at the conference in Las Vegas. Oh, congratulations. Thank you. Yeah, so even beyond a co op, there's professional opportunities within the college. Absolutely. Okay. Okay. That's great. So as far as like the size, the population, um, are there a lot of international students that enroll in your college? Um, I would say we have a pretty good amount. We have mm -hmm. um, currently in our college we have a little over 100 international students. Okay. Um, so, um, Are there any organizations or any groups for students to join uh, to gain academic support possibly within your college or learning communities within your college? Yeah, absolutely. Every uh, student, especially first year students, coming into college or we will be involved in a learning community. Mm -hmm. uh, we will have the same schedule as everybody else that first that first semester, um, developing that kind of community and a peer leader and a faculty leader mm -hmm. to assist them. And then um, each of our schools has various student groups that you can get involved with that are beneficial. We have the Information Technology Student Association, and so we'll do things for professional development opportunities and networking opportunities. There's our Women in IT student organization. Um, there are some other programs, like if you are in criminal justice, that's another program that we have our college students involved in with the Criminal Justice Society. Uh, so a lot of the groups are focused around providing opportunities for learning and professional development and networking. Mm -hmm. uh, they'll bring in guest speakers, they'll bring in individuals to practice interviews, um, mm -hmm. and, and things like that. Okay, that's fantastic. So um, concerning coming to Cincinnati, Ohio, what's your experience been like living, living in this city? Well, um, personally, I would say you should feel like home <laughs> because uh, I've always wanted a kind of uh, study experience with a blend of uh, a <coughs> student 
and also it's cultural taste, a taste of cultural um, uh, home. So being in UC and living in the community, it's so conducive and receptive for international students. So, so far, I'm enjoying my stay and I'm not really feeling like I'm out of home. That's great. I'm glad to hear that. Do you live around campus, very close, or are you, are you driving in 20 minutes? Yeah, uh, my, my house is like about 15 or 10 minutes walk from a uh, campus. It's okay. just down the street. And there's a shuttle right in front of my house that kind of conveys from my house to UC. Like a UC bus yeah, shuttle that'll yeah, pick you up? Yes, yeah, okay. but sometimes I just prefer to trek. That's nice to walk, yeah. right? Do you feel uh, safe with the community? Yeah, of course, it is very safe. Sometimes I have to do a lot of work to late night, 10, 11 p.m. in the night, and it's very safe to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's great. And then concerning like getting your groceries or yeah. your social life, things to do, go places to go eat, get coffee. Is that all within this community? Yes, it's all within the community. There are a lot of stores around, probably Kroger is the closest. And the grocery store? Yes, yeah. yes. And there's some other, you visit Walmart, African store, and of course, there yeah, I can get a very uh, <coughs> uh, local food and everything. Is right there. Do you have a favorite restaurant? Well, yeah, I would say yes, I've been to a Chinese restaurant and it's a really cool Pia Chang. Pia Chang? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it is good. <laughs> it can be a little expensive. Yeah, it's sometimes. Not expensive. Not sorry. Yeah. You know, it's funny as I used to work there. <laughs> really? Yeah, a long time ago. Oh, that's interesting. <laughs> so, um, as far as like uh, your college, you know, is there is there anything else we should be chatting about as far as the programs or what students can expect to experience in, in yeah. your college? Uh, I definitely uh, want to add on something that Victor mentioned on the accelerated program mm -hmm. for IT. Oh, okay. Um, students can start this degree as a, as a first year student and choose to enroll in our accelerated pathway, which means they'll graduate in five years. So regardless of when we add or increase, I'm mean, still a five-year program, but they can graduate with a bachelor's in IT and a master's degree, and they can choose from one of five master's programs. Since they can get their MBA, they can get a master in health informatics, they can get the master of education in structural and design technology, they can get a um, master in criminal justice. And so, um, so yeah, there's those different master degrees that students can enroll in and so they'll be a will be taking both undergraduate and graduate courses and that won't start until about their third year of the program so they don't have to put to side right away but that is a, a popular so, option. So you're turning a four year undergraduate degree into how many years to then have your bachelor's and your graduate degree? So it's a five year degree program okay. to get your bachelor's and a master's degree. That's fantastic. Yeah and so they do get discount tuition as well. Um, so they do get a good part of their hours they pay the undergraduate fee. Um, which is quite a bit less than what you would pay at the graduate level. So there's some savings. There are some savings and time as okay. well. And so you can come out of this degree with a, a bachelor's degree, a master's degree, and uh, uh, over a year of full-time work paid experience by, by the time you graduate. Fantastic. So and I want to backtrack a little. We did talk about the admission requirements for your college. Yeah. Or is it is it all direct admit? We do direct admit. Okay. Um, you. We need, in our college, we're looking into either around a 2.7 unweighted, 2.9 weighted GPA. Or higher. Um, or higher, yeah, that's the minimum okay. that we look for. And then you year. accept the ACT or SAT. Correct. And you also accept another te English test, TOEFL, mm -hmm. IELTS, you accept other tests. We do. Correct. Yeah, and then the math placement test too from here on campus. Correct. Okay. Yep. And then um, if you are in the IT program, you if you take the ACT, uh, the 21 is usually a score that they would want to shoot for. The 21 composite mm -hmm. or higher? Correct. Okay. Yep. Are there scholarships within your college? There and are. if so, when are they offered? Yeah, so we offer for, we both, we offer both first year and transfer scholarships for students. And so if you're applying uh, out of high school, then as long as you apply by December 1st, we uh, will review students um, for scholarships based on their admission application. So just as you would if you were to is that separate than the university scholarships? Yes. Yes. So okay. you, and what's the range of scholarship um, you're talking about? And so we have we offer scholarships for first year students ranging from um, five hundred up to uh, I've seen three or four thousand dollars scholarships. Okay. For first year students. Okay. And that includes international students. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as an international student, you could be awarded uh, a global scholarship. In addition to that, you could be offered a scholarship from the College of Education, Criminal Justice, and Human Services. 
And then as far as a transfer student, a scholarship as well? Yeah, we offer scholarships for anyone transferring from <coughs> another institution, or even if you started out at one of our regional campuses mm -hmm. and you want to transition over, we offer scholarships for students and that are transitioning. What's the range for a transfer scholarship? Uh, we offer uh, $1,000 scholarships okay. every semester. I think we do around four $1,000 scholarships every semester. Do they have to apply every semester? Mm -hmm. or is, okay. They can apply any semester they plan on transferring. Okay. Great. Well, thanks so much. Is there anything else we should add? Probably. You want to share? <laughs> I know. There's a lot. Your college is so big. I would say I'm one other thing. thing. Um, because at UC, we, off, we also offer like computer science and computer engineering, which there's mm -hmm. a lot of people doing with IT around, I would say. So, and those two programs are offered in the College of Engineering and Applied Science. Correct. And so I would say as far as IT goes, if you're interested in IT at UC, it's more of the applied side of technology. So learning a lot of um, those applied skills, developing, like if you look, consider like the applications on the Mm -hmm. uh, everything is kind of focused around solving problems, uh, to you know, providing solutions to problems. And so a lot of students are creating things that are having direct impacts on communities and organizations and lives. Uh, we had one student, I think it was last year, they created an app for the blind uh, to basically mm -hmm. allow them to identify objects in their environment. Uh, so those kinds of things are people creating a smart home hub to protect their home from cybersecurity, from threats mm -hmm. from outside the home. Different things like that. So mm -hmm. very much more applied. You know, not math and physics based. So not a lot of math courses. Math, the highest math they take is pre-calculus in the IT program. So um, it's it's a good program if you really are more hands-on and kind of create solutions to problems. Thank you. Thanks for clarifying the difference between mm -hmm. that program, IT, and then yeah, and, yeah, the yeah, programs in the College of Engineering. Right. Yeah. So obviously they're more math and physics based. Mm -hmm. and so if you wanted to create more of the science behind it, or actually like creating the physical device mm -hmm. itself and be more in the science. Okay. Anything you else anything you want to add, Victor? Well nothing great, maybe just little experience. But uh, I think also the IT program is very okay and uh, students are able to receive support even to get industry experience even after the program because uh, you're given opportunity to go out and do your industry experience while also I mean, during this summer, for example, uh, during this summer, I'll be doing the research for, in collaboration with some faculty members at UC Berkeley, and that's a very mm -hmm. good opportunity. That's fantastic. Well, you're doing really well. <laughs> I'm glad you're here. Thank you. Yeah. Well, we thank you all for watching this video to learn more about the College of Education, Criminal Justice, and Human Services. Uh, we hope this was informative for you. If you have any questions, you're welcome to comment on the video. If you'd like to chat with us directly, please go to uc.edu, search for international, and find our contact there. So thanks so much for watching. We appreciate it. Bye-bye. See ya. Bye.